Hello, and welcome to another ScrapeOps video. Today, we'll be going over how to use and rotate through proxies for web scraping. Using proxies allows you to spread your requests over multiple IP addresses, making it harder for websites to detect and block your web scrapers. We'll also be looking at how to integrate the three most common types of proxies into our Node.js request promise based web scraper. Everything we'll be covering today can be found in this article, Node.js Request Promise, How to Use and Rotate Through Proxies, found on our website, and the link is in the description. Specifically, I'll be walking you through using proxy IPs with Request Promise, proxy authentication with Request Promise, and how to integrate the three most common types of proxy formats. Those are rotating through a proxy IP list, using a proxy gateway, and using a proxy API endpoint. Let's begin. Using a proxy with request promise is fairly straightforward. Let's set up a simple try and catch block to help us use it. This code is going to asynchronously make a request and then log the response. Within the request, we have options that we can set. For example, we can set the method to get post, put, delete, patch, and head. We can also set the URL we want to scrape, and finally, the proxy we will be using. This httpbin.org forward slash IP website is designed to return whatever IP address was used to access it. Now let's run it and see what happens. And there you have it the same IP address we used as a proxy instead of our own. Some proxy IPs require authentication in the form of a username and password. Let's see what happens when we try this request without authenticating the proxy. As you can see, it returns an error saying that proxy authentication is required. Now let's see what happens when we include the username and password in the proxy string like so. And there we go, it's successful. Now that we've covered the basics of integrating a proxy using request promise, let's go over the three most common proxy formats. A couple of years ago, proxy providers would sell you a list of proxy IP addresses, and you would configure your scraper to rotate through these IP addresses and use a new one with each request. However, today, more and more proxy providers don't sell raw lists of proxy IP addresses anymore. Instead, they provide access to their proxy pools via proxy gateways or proxy API endpoints. If you were looking to find a good proxy provider, then check out our web scraping comparison tool where you can compare the plans of all major proxy providers. Now, let's take a look at how to actually integrate all three. Starting with rotating through a proxy IP list. In this case, a proxy provider will have given us a list of proxy IP addresses that we will need to rotate through by selecting a new IP address for every request. The proxy list would look something like this. Let's store it as an array of strings for now. To integrate them into our scrapers, we'll need to configure our code to pick a random proxy from the list. We could do that in one line of code, like this. Now, every time we make a request, it will pick a random proxy from the list. Let's see it in action. As you can see, every time I run it, it uses a different proxy from the list to use. This is a simplistic model, of course, because when scraping on a large scale, we would also want to set up a mechanism to monitor the performance of each individual IP address and remove it from the proxy rotation if it got banned or blocked. Because of this, proxy providers might not sell you lists of proxy IP addresses anymore. Instead, they might give you access to their proxy pools via a proxy gateway. Companies like Bright Data will provide us with a single proxy that we can integrate into our scraper. They would then manage the rotation, selection, cleaning, etc. of the proxies for us. This is the most common way to use residential and mobile proxies, and it's also becoming increasingly common when using data center proxies as well. 
Here's an example of how to integrate a residential proxy gateway from Bright Data into our scraper. All we have to do is input the single proxy they give us, along with our username and password to authenticate it, and we now have access to all of their proxies they provide. As you can see, it's much easier to integrate things using a proxy list, because we don't have to worry about implementing all the maintenance logic ourselves. Finally, a lot of proxy providers have started offering smart proxy APIs that take care of managing our proxy infrastructure by rotating proxies and headers for us. All we need to do then is focus on extracting the data we need. With this method, we typically just send the URL we want to scrape and our API key to their API endpoint. They then return the HTML response. Although every proxy API provider has a slightly different API integration, they're all very similar and fairly simple to integrate. Here's an example of how to integrate the ScrapeOps proxy manager. In this case, we pass the ScrapeOps API endpoint in the URL parameter, and then we pass our API key and the URL we want to scrape in their respective fields within the query parameter denoted by this QS here. When we run this, our proxy manager will deal with finding the best proxy for that domain and return the HTML response. Let's run it and see what happens. As you can see, we get back all the headers using a proxy generated by the API endpoint. As I mentioned before, ScrapeOps has a proxy manager that you can use to manage the proxy infrastructure for you. You can get your very own free API key with 1,000 free requests by signing up with the link in the description. And that's how you can integrate proxies into your Node.js request promise scrapers. If you'd like to learn more about web scraping, be sure to check out the ScrapeOps web scraping playbook. Or you can check out one of our more in-depth guides like how to scrape the web without getting blocked and the ethics of web scraping. Links are all in the description. Okay, thanks again for watching. If you found this video useful, please hit that like button, go ahead and comment which topics you'd like for us to cover next, and be sure to subscribe for more guides on all things web scraping. See you next time.